from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. The Gallatin County Commissioners recently awarded $500,000 in American Rescue Plan funds. Find out how that money will be spent coming up. And a winter storm making travel in local highways this morning and even holding up some flights at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. Coming up, get the latest on local road conditions, see how climate change is changing our winter weather cycles. Coming up, a trucker rally to protest mandates here in Hamilton, Montana. Well, good morning, Southwest Montana. It is uh, 630. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. Uh, again, crazy yeah. stuff going on out there. Uh, if you don't have to travel today, I would say don't. Yeah, don't or put it off for a little while. The snow is a big issue this morning. We've had some uh, pretty good accumulation anywhere between um, two and six inches mm -hmm. in the valleys and continues to fall. Here's the uh, travel forecast. I'm putting us in the red. Major to moderate concerns for traveling on I-90, I-15, um, 191, depending on where you are. Single digits and strong wind visibility continues to be an issue, but you can see the snow is tapering. We're just going to be dealing with um, you know, low visibility through the morning and probably the afternoon with these stronger winds. Temperatures into the single digits for the afternoon. Bundle up and of course make sure that you're prepared it is slick, and if you get stuck, you'll, want, you'll be glad you have extra layers yeah. with you. All right, thank you, Matt. Uh, we're going to continue to update throughout the rest of the morning. Meantime, 631, we are seeing historically warmer states experiencing critical cold weather events more often. That includes huge power outages in places that previously haven't been affected by freezing temps. One year ago, this was the scene in much of Texas. Got many people asking what needs to happen to prevent this across the country. Jesse Cohen shows us what's changed. The kitchen at Peached Tortilla in Austin, Texas, operates like a well-oiled machine. Half hour out. But one year ago, things were a bit more chaotic. We had our chefs cooking in headlamps, and we, um, we made free food for the community with all that product that we had. General Manager Jenna Paul says business stopped being the priority and the devotion to community began. I just remember after driving employees whose cars weren't even moving from their parking spot, I was, I was out till like about four in the morning driving people home. It was a complete ghost town, um, no one on the roads or anything. The beginning of February this year came with another warning. It was like another ice storm coming, so it was just like a lot of PTSD. A year ago, we had this energy crisis that left hundreds of people dead and tens of billions of dollars of damages and energy bills, and so Texas decided to take some action. Michael Weber teaches at the University of Texas at Austin. He says states create their power grids to serve the highest demand. In a place like Vermont or northern states where it's really cold and they have a lot of electric heating, they would design the system to have peak performance in the winter. And the difference is you would design your power plant to keep the heat in in Minnesota, whereas in Texas, we design the power plants to keep the heat out. Within the last year, he says Texas winterized its electrical power system and built new power plants to be more robust against the next storm. But there were a lot of things not done. We didn't really take priority on winterizing the gas system, which was a major failure point. We didn't really take serious action on energy efficiency or demand response. See how the gas system is critical to the power system and how the power system is critical to the water system and the water system is critical to human health. All these things are connected. Elsewhere in the country, electrical systems have discussed plans to share power across large geographical areas, meaning if a power storm hit one state, another state could provide power. This is the complication of climate change is it really upsets all of our planning habits that we've had that we built up over decades and centuries. Austin Mayor Steve Adler agrees not enough has been done in the state or elsewhere. So he's focusing on bringing his community together in case another widespread need arises. When you get to that kind of challenge at that scale, uh, some of the most effective work being done were neighbors helping neighbors, communities helping communities. We learned as a city that we have to do a better job of empowering that kind of grassroots response, institutionalizing it into our emergency uh, operations response. He points out that is something other states can strive to emulate. In Austin, Texas, I'm Jesse Cohen reporting. 634 now, nearly 200 Freedom Rally protesters were arrested in Ottawa, Canada this weekend. Meanwhile, local truckers and supporters gathered in Hamilton on Sunday to show their support. MTN's Hannah Hislop takes us to the Bitterroot. 
here in the Kmart parking lot in Hamilton, Montana, there are about 50 vehicles decorated with American, Canadian and political flags, as well as signs like this one saying we love truckers and supporting those truckers as they rally against mandates here in Montana. And the point of all of this is just freedom of choice. We don't care if people get the vaccine or don't get the vaccine. That's a personal decision. On Sunday, a crowded parking lot filled with decorated pickups and big rigs protesting COVID mandates. We're all just hardworking Americans and Canadians and we just uh, we just want to get rid of the mandates. This rally is a reaction to vaccine requirements for truckers who work across the northern border. Supporters expressed mixed emotions and explained why they came out to participate. I don't like people sitting there telling me what to do, how to do it. Elated, happy, you know, it's, it's, it's a good feeling. Hamilton trucker Enrique Cruz says he came out to support what he calls a brotherhood. You know, so if we can come together for this, we can come together for a lot more. They weren't alone. Along the route to Missoula, supporters on the side of the road waved and cheered. In Hamilton, Hannah Hislop, MTN News. 636 now. The America Rescue Plan funds provided Gallatin County with some $22 million in direct funds. Recently, the award, Gallatin County Commission awarded $500,000 to the One Valley with the goal of providing investment back into the community. TN's Edgar Cedillo reports. With millions of dollars in American Rescue Plan funds, the Gallatin County Commissioners are now looking to reinvest that back into the community. It seemed like an appropriate fit um, to partner with One Valley to support our nonprofit community who's often at the front lines of the pandemic response. Now commissioners hope that those $500,000 become an investment. The stimulus money is a really appropriate uh, way to support the nonprofit sector. It'll bolster our economy um, economically and then also uh, support families, organizations, um, and businesses that are uh, faced with challenges during this difficult time. One Valley may have the money now, but that's not its final stop. Um, so we get to play a role of, of being a philanthropic matchmaker, which is really fun. The goal of providing other local nonprofits access to these funds. The is really about providing relief uh, to social service organizations. One of those organizations who hopes to apply is HRDC. Certainly we'll be looking at it to see if there is a way that we can get some of those dollars directly to the people that we're serving to help support their economic recovery. One way that they hope to use the funds is to invest in the two issues which are affecting people the most in the Valley. The biggest need is more housing units and um, more child care options and so those are big lifts. Um, so we're going to have more clarity around how those dollars are going to be allocated by March. One Valley is opening the application process for 501c nonprofits in March. They will then work with commissioners to elect where the funds will go. In Gallatin County, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. All right, thank you, Edgar. 638 now. We've shared so many uh, people's stories of struggling to make it in the pandemic. One group of people who may turn, many turn to are chaplains. Vanessa Mishanya shows us how they're also coming to the aid of frontline workers. Who do you turn to when you feel lost? I think there's been a, a rise in people asking the big questions, you know, where do I go when I die? What's going to happen? What is life about? Adversity has a way of knocking us off our intended path. For doctors, nurses, and first responders, the uncertainty of the pandemic has made them feel as if they were lost in the woods. There's this sort of surreptitious trick with burnout that causes us to forget why we do what we do every day. I just had to try to help connect people back to calling, back to purpose, why they're here. Reverend Mike Guthrie is a hospital chaplain. Mike Neal, now retired, was a law enforcement chaplain. Both have almost two decades of experience. It's called a ministry of presence. Their job, to be present for their colleagues when their work gets too heavy, be it with a conversation about faith or just being there to listen. However, being present has been tough these last two years. We all feel like we're a prize fighter with our hands tied behind our back. Try to relate to someone that you can't see their face, you can't see their facial expressions. You can see their eyes, 
you can't really relate to people. We walk this tension between wanting to support our patients, but also having these restrictions in place to protect everybody else. A tight line to walk, but their work, the emotional and spiritual support they offer has never been more important, including the support they provide other workers and first responders so they can continue in their chosen fields, helping others. We will never go back to being the same person we were before COVID. I think the lifelong lessons and the impact and experiences that we've been through will change us, you know, in a lasting way. And the, and the goal is to make sure that that change is done in a, in a healing way. Because for these chaplains and chaplains across the country, these last two years have made them more sure than ever in their own vocation to their jobs, being the heroes to our heroes. It's been my calling, that's why I did it in the beginning was it's not for me. It's not for me and my soul, but it's for them. I'm Vanessa Mishanya. I cannot say enough about our Gallon County Sheriff's Chapel yeah, they've Corps done as well. They are vital to the work that goes on. They've done some great work. Good yep. stuff there, Matt. Uh, it uh, looks like the wind has died down just a little bit here on the patio. It doesn't change the conditions out there, though. Uh, still visibility is still an issue, and yeah. of course we're dealing with uh, two mile visibility in Belgrade, two and a half in Livingston, two miles in Dillon, uh, down to seven in Butte. So um, snow and ice on the area roadways. We are dealing with slick conditions across the area. There's Gallatin Canyon this morning. Um, look at Bozeman Pass. Visibility is certainly an issue. Snow and ice down Gallatin Canyon. Uh, we're getting uh, scattered snow and ice on Monida Pass. Norse Hill has been nasty, but luckily we're not seeing a ton of accidents. Only a couple reported to MHP so far. We're of course going to talk more in depth about conditions and what to expect. All it's right. going to be cold. It's, it already is, yes. and it's not going to get any better for a little while. Thank you, Matt. 641, it is time for a break when we come